All right, what's going on, every guy, everybody? Uh, I'll be on our next here, and we're gonna be playing some uh, some more UFC three today. Um, tonight is the night of the Dos Santos Velasquez fight, so I figured in honor of that honor of that epic uh, epic trilogy, I would play through title mode as one of my personal favorites, Junior Dos Santos. Now, I know that I might get some criticism for uh, for going for Dos Santos in this fight. Velasquez is the uh, the uh, two to one favorite, uh, I believe is the statistic. But I followed Junior Dos Santos' career for a long time, watched him get all those epic knockouts, and I just he's he's the guy that I like. Uh, I'll have no problem if Velasquez wins this fight. I'll have no problem calling him the best uh, best heavyweight in the UFC. Because both these guys, I mean. If Velasquez is number one, then Dos Santos is number two. If Dos Santos is number one, then Velasquez is number two. I mean, that is, that's the way it is. I mean, both these guys are going to go down as uh, as two of the greatest fighters of all time. And probably the two best heavyweights to ever grace the octagon. I mean, you think back... I guess no, Randy. Randy probably will. I don't know. You have to look back and just think about dominating champions in the heavyweight division. Whoa! I already got caught. He's got that nice uppercut. I'm all right as Dos Santos in this game. He's a uh, you know no no ground game really. He's got a little bit of jujitsu, but not really. Straight going. I don't see why Sean McCorkle would try to... Nice well, Sean McCorkle really would not match up well against Dos Santos. Of course, Sean McCorkle is not as good as Dos Santos in any regard, but... Uh, but he, you know, he's okay at striking, and he's pretty good at jiu-jitsu. But Dos Santos is better than him at jiu-jitsu and striking, I think. Big, sexy Sean McCorkle. Why would he go with that nickname, of any nickname he could have? Oh, right this is going to be it, I think, unless oh. he catches it. No, he, he didn't even catch it. Oh, that is it. That looks like how a uh, Dos Santos fight would go. Just that one uppercut knocks him down and then finishes it. Yeah, the uh, prelims start in about an hour, so have an hour to kill. Figured play some UFC 3, why not? Watch it again. Uh, and here's I like making these videos because I get to talk about UFC and, and MMA and everything. Control. I got into an argument on the internet earlier with somebody. I was in a, uh, I was on Facebook and I, you know, I'm, I like a bunch of different UFC and MMA related pages, and it was talking about the greatest heavyweight of all time, and a lot of people <laughs> were saying Fedor, but there's this one guy that was like Fedor got beat by Fabricio Verdum and. Who else did he say? Said Fabricio Verdum, uh, Dan Henderson, and, and uh, Bigfoot. And I, uh, that makes me laugh every time I hear somebody argue that. Because, I, you know, out of those guys, Dan might have been able to beat him in his prime. But that's that's a big maybe. And and when, when I mean, they could have fought, yeah. But when, when they were in their prime, you know, Dan fought as a welterweight and a middleweight. Uh, you know, but but as for Bigfoot and, and Fabricio Verdum, I don't think they could have beat him in his prime. You know, it's not like you, Fabricio got the the tap out on him when he when he was old, but you know he's Sambo. Sambo's uh, Sambo's submission fighting. It's leg submission, but it's still submission fighting, and I'm sure he knows how to defend. Uh, Coming up next. Uh, a triangle, as Fabricio got him with, but I don't know. It's just funny that so many people disregard him because they don't understand. You know, it's not like I was around to watch what Fedor did back in the day. I'm only 18, so I didn't start watching UFC and MMA until recently. 
but since then I've fa fallen in love with, with watching old pride fights and everything and you have to respect Fedor for what he did for the sport much like the man I'm facing a lot of people because he had such a bad uh, UFC career disregard uh, disregard Mirko already oh let's finish it that'd be awesome oh I wish I could have finished it right there under a minute Oh, we'd still get under a minute. Come on. That's it. That's it. That was a quick one. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, a lot of people disregard Mirko Krokop. They need to go back and watch some Pride highlights. And anyone who says that Pride didn't have the best competitors, he needs to understand that at that point in time, when all this stuff, all these epic fights from 2003 uh, to about 2006 were happening in Pride, those were the best fighters in the world. If you were the best fighter in the world, you didn't go to the UFC, you went to Pride. You know, UFC had, you know, it's few, it had Randy and it had uh, Chuck and it had uh, Tito and stuff like that. And it, ha it had its, you know, it, its best in the world, but then you look, Chuck got beat by, uh, by Rampage over in Pride, you know, Chuck went to Pride, got beat. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, uh. referee Dan Mergliata has called a stop to this contest. A lot of people say Pride was fixed. Seconds of the I, you know, round. as for the if they tilted it towards, like, Junior one thing I think is funny is that, that when uh, Rampage says that, that it was fixed for, uh, for Vanderlei. Right, and he says that, that the judges would call it a certain way and the referees would do certain things. But it's not like, I mean, a knockout is a knockout. Why didn't, why didn't, you know, what, 51 seconds? Uh, why didn't Rampage just knock him out? It's not like Rampage fights, Rampage, any of Rampage's fights went with uh, Vanderlei went, uh, went to decision. When they were both in their prime, uh, I don't know who would win because I think Vanderlei and Pride that was obviously his prime. You know, 18 and 0. That was that was obviously his prime. Uh, uh, what is he? 22 and 4 overall in Pride. Isn't that what the statistics were? Although you know he had been beaten in the UFC. I don't know exactly what he ended Pride with, but uh, but at that point I think that was before um, for Rampage's prime. Rampage got into his prime when he came to the UFC, won the champion, became the only person to hold, any the only one to hold the UFC and the Pride title consecutively when they unified him, him versus Dan Henderson. Junior Dos Santos, Pat Berry. And we are yeah. Joe, how do you see this matchup I mean, just going people for disregard these Santos legends tonight. like they're nothing because they, they did bad it, in late into their career. Momentum. And yeah, I so think some of them should have just retired. Like and, uh, you know, jeez, keeps tagging me. Look for him to come out very aggressive tonight. Sorry, I was getting scores. tagged. Uh, I stopped thinking. But, you know, a lot of them you think just need to retire, you know. Like, push kick. Who's ones that, uh, of course, Vandy should nice retire. I want to see him fight Chael, and that be it. I do want to see the Chael Sonnen fight. Oh, beautiful combination. He's left I have a lingering down. feeling that Chael oh. would win that fight. Oh, he caught it. Well, it like Even though I'm a big Vanderlei fanboy, you know, you have to be realistic. Another one that should retire. Whoa, look at that. Uh, another one that should just retire. Uh, Rampage should not have signed with Bellator. You just retire. You know, you, you're getting old. You don't, you know, all the fights he lost in the UFC were to, were, were to top tier guys yeah, and champions and things like that. Timing. So you can understand why he'd lose Round them, but the you don't want to get to that point that the rookies finish. are beating you. Doesn't get any better than that. You don't, you don't want to get to the that point when, you when you're, you're, you're getting knocked out all the time. You really don't. Good I don't think, he, has he ever been knocked out? Oh, of course he has, Vanderlei. I don't know if he's ever been knocked out in the UFC, but obviously he got knocked out by Van Hoy. Oh, and that's all uh, she wrote. Uh, Tito. Tito should have retired a long time ago. Tito should have got should have left when uh, when he won the Bader decision. fight. But I guess Ladies something about him Ray not Dan having enough Murray money or something. But yeah, once he won the Bader, that should have been his last fight. That would have been awesome for him to to, to, to suffer the what is it, it was a three or four fight Murray losing streak and then come back beat the beat the new guy that everybody's looking to to be great. And then that'd be it. That'd be awesome. But no, he decided to keep going. He won like one fight out of his last seven or some crap like that. It's, 
It's just not, it's not a good, good thing. <laughs> These guys, Chuck Liddell had it right. Chuck Liddell knew when it was time to retire and just retired. And, and didn't try to come back. He just retired when he knew it was time. And great, you know, a lot of people don't have the presence of mind to do that. Randy Couture, he knew it was time to retire, and he retired. Uh, Matt Hughes, you know, sort of borderline, almost past uh, when it was time to retire, but uh, but he got it pretty quickly. He he knew that, that that his time had come, and it was you know the torch had been passed. We begin our night Whoa. with a heavyweight collision between national wrestling champion King Velasquez Already? and Junior. Wow, I'm going to have to start to pay attention and focus. I didn't, he must have lost the title. Jeez. Wow. I didn't expect him to fight him already. Our tale of the tape is brought to you by I have trouble Dodge. fighting Kane, so let's hope I can do this. Once again, with the Last time I made one of these, which I'm going to upload this one before I end up uploading that one. Bruce I guess I won't spoil it. But, oh, man. We are live. Mm. From the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. And now, it's time to begin our first bout. Yeah. This man is a boxer and Actually, I'm surprised. I guess He's because it was the first one I uploaded, but but and this is not saying much, but the uh, the first video I uploaded was that test I did from my capture card and it was a UFC Junior gameplay. Sagano. Me playing through this Chael Sonny. That's got the most views on my channel. My channel has no views and right now though, so but I just started. I'm not. I, I just sort of want to start putting out more, so there's more chances of my stuff getting viewed. Thinking about starting. A, I've talked about this a lot on that bully LP, but I guess this will be the first time I'm seeing it. I think that's uploaded. I think I'm gonna do Crash Bandicoot one. I just got it in the mail. Michael yesterday and I got Crash 3 in the mail today. Bought them on Amazon. I was trying to find them out in the wild at a retro game store I go to, but uh, they never showed up. So I did get Crash 2 there though, and Crash Team Racing. They have Crash Bash, but I haven't bought it yet. Oh, he just took me down. Oh, so Santos doesn't have too great of ground skills. He's got pretty good ground get up though. I mean in real life, you know, he's got the black belt in jiu-jitsu. We've just never really seen too much of what he can do on the ground. Pushing his opponent away. He decides oh. to let him up. Oh, nice uppercut. There's the uppercuts, it's just Velasquez, it's hard because right? you have to time them really well with the with, with the lunging uppercut like that. Because you have to really know when to, to throw that. I actually think that Kane, Kane might have nice that too. Kick. Nice counter right hand. Now they're fighting in Houston tonight, which is actually my hometown. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to the event because I, I just never got to buy tickets. So, but uh, I'll be watching it. And I think that Kane is definitely going to be getting the cheers tonight because of where they are. There's a lot of Latinos in this area, so I think they're going to be going for them. I think they're going to be going for Diego over Gil Gilbert Melendez, though. I'm going for Diego Sanchez. The only fight I'm, uh, I'm really, you know, the only big fight that everyone's talking about that I'm up in, you know, I just died up in the air about, don't know who I want to win, is, uh, Daniel Cormier versus, versus Roy Nelson. For a long time I was saying just Roy Nelson, but I've started to watch more Daniel Cormier strike force fights and everything, and looking back on him fighting Josh Barnett and, uh, all that. He's just so good, you know, like he didn't really show off how exciting he can be in the mere fight And plus it's hard for me to look at that fight and be like, all right, he's good because I'm a big mere fanboy, but You know, here's another one that if he loses this to Al Alistair Overeem, just retire, you know, you're a two-time UFC champ So, you know, you'll be in the Hall of Fame someday. Just don't don't let it get too out of control. You're It's so hard for me to say he's out of his prime because I don't want to see him go there was another one who was great at just retiring, uh, was Forrest Griffin. Stephen Final Bonner never seconds, had a prime. <laughs> and if he did, we didn't see rounds. it, because in the UFC, he, he's never, you know, never really shown off. He's always been exciting, but he's never been, like, the guy who's going to win everything. Forrest Griffin is much like that, too, but of course, you know, he was able to beat Rampage. Able to beat Shogun. Uh, you know, Shogun, what happened? Does anybody remember Shogun in Pride? 
being really easy to, to, to gas out and everything, really easy to, to, to you know, like, I don't know, like, he, he, he didn't seem to ever get really worn out and pried too much, but now he's come to the UFC, and I, I don't know, he just constantly gets worn out. Let's go to the replay of that round, Mike. This was just an unbelievable counter right here. Ooh, that's this nice is work. flawless timing. And look at this. I that should have been a connection. He should have gone down. That so was like neat athleticism. Oh. And here we see some really decent takedown defense, making it tough to finish that. Solid striking on display in that round, Mike. And if it lands There's the beautiful Ariani as we All get right. set for round 2. Let's do this thing. Are you ready? Sir? Eves Levine. Set for round two. Fight. This fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Make them reach it and make them pay. Oh, they're just throwing. Oh, they're exchanging here. Ooh. You have to worry, worry when, you, when you're ducking underneath uh, Kane's Mike. punches. He's got, uh, he's got nice uppercuts in he this game. He can't take so. many more of these, Joe. You have, you have to keep that in mind. Nice stuff to take nice down. Nice sprawl. Good takedown good defense. Ooh, oh, that nice was a good combination, right. I must say so myself. Nice combination! Big right hand! Hit me with that uppercut. Both been exchanging. Swing and a miss. I just don't want to get caught. Left. Anything big, you know, drops me. Because it'll be hard to defend that Kane. Ah, Kane. <laughs> Kane Velasquez. Ground and pound. Catches you with something big to put you down. He caught the kick. It is not going to be easy to, get, to defend yourself. Especially dazed on the ground, it's pretty much over. Come on. Escape, controlling the top position. There we go. Pushes him off with the feet. Yep. Oh, nice counter left hook right there. Oh, left see, that's down. where. Oh, no. He ate that one. He's getting into better position. Well, it looked like he was hurt, but he snapped back really quick. Come on. And the crowd continues to rally behind Junior Dos Santos. Don't get stuck on the ground with him. Full guard here. <sighs> oh, I don't want to. That, that would be funny Pushing if I lost on the game. To the guy, you know, like to Velasquez when I'm going for Dos Santos tonight. This wouldn't be a good sign of things to come. I actually did that uh, when Benson Henderson was finding uh, Nick Diaz, or Nate Diaz rather. Uh, I was going for uh, Nick, fucking Nate, I'm sorry. Uh, I was going for Nate. And so I, that, that that day I, I, I played uh, I played this and I, I made them fight and I lost. <laughs> Uh, I, was, I was Nate and I lost, and then he lost. And, but I, you know, it was just wishful thinking uh, on that fight. I, I think most people knew that Ben was going to be the one with his hands raised at the end. striking skills from both fighters in that round. Absolutely, Mike. It'll be interesting to see if they keep it on the feet in the third. Yeah. You want this fight? You gonna go win this round? You got this fight. You win this round. You got. Let's take a look at some of the action. I'm glad he didn't take Mike. me out there this was when, well he, when he knocked You're me down. A beautiful slip and counter. And here we see some amazing. He's running backwards. So you're going to have to keep jabbing in. You know, I do have a hard time winning these things on, on, on a, in heavyweight. Here we go. And I don't know why. I have a hard time fighting at heavyweight because it's so much easier to get knocked out. Excellent combination. Oh. He drops with the oh, come on. Yes! Oh, that is genuine. I am I was worried coming into the third. All right. Hopefully I don't have to fight him again in this thing. Really ruthless performance here. Got on top of him and just hammered him into submission. You know thing is funny about this game? Uh, Look at it from this I guess when they were developing the game, Dos Santos was the champion, and uh, or no, rather Kane was the champion, and still undefeated. Uh, and the, then Dos Santos came out, 
and beat him. And so Dos Santos has uh, uh, doesn't on his record in the game. It doesn't show the fight with uh, Kane. And Kane is still undefeated, although Dos Santos is the champion. And I think that's why Kane has the uh, highest overall in the game. I think they could even them both out. If not. Kane, I believe, in Kane, the only heavyweight with 90. Even the Pride guys, I don't think, have a 90 overall. He's got a 91, and the next highest is uh, 89, which I, I know Junior has, but I think uh, I think Pride, Minotaro, Nogueira also has that. Although I think uh, in Pride mode they call him Antonio Nogueira. Talking about Daniel Cormier and uh, and Roy Nelson earlier. Did I ever finish that thought? I don't know. I like them both. I like Roy's personality, but sometimes he can be a little bit of a whiner. All right. Sometimes I have troubles with uh, Brock Lesnar because he's so good at wrestling, and if he hits you a few times clean, then you're going down. So I do have a bit of problems of with Brock, but I'll try. Boost Mobile. And now with the official introductions of our fighters, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC Heavyweight Division. Introducing first. Fighting Brock is a guy that just came and went in the UFC. This man is a boxer and jiu-jitsu fighter. He stands six feet three inches He did tall. better. I really, I mean, he did better than I expected him to, though. I knew about his amateur wrestling background, but he did a lot better than I would think. And if you watch some of his amateur wrestling competitions, he doesn't do, doesn't do great. He just sort of has good cardio, and he uh, and he just outlasts his opponent because you know you see him not do so great. Right now he's six and five. Fighting out of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. Remember when Dave Batista? Dave Batista only had that one fight in MMA, didn't he? I really hated him as a fighter. The way the way he tried to defend from strikes and everything, and the way he fought. I mean, it wasn't just like it wasn't that boring, you know. It was just an average fight. But uh, you could tell that he really wasn't that good at fighting. He's just big, you know. He overpowers people tonight. We've seen him win yeah, his last I don't think he had any sort of an amateur King wrestling background. He was just big. I definitely think it's possible. He's building confidence with every win, okay. and that's what he needs in there. So much of fighting is about imposing your will on the other man. And the kind of confidence you oh my God. Mount here. Oh, my God. He's got him back. He's got both hooks in. Trying to flatten right, good, out his good. opponent. Got him off. Just got to keep him off. That's my buddy. Oh, nice counter left hook right there. Lesnar's really starting to bleed now, Mike. Oh, good uh, counter. I'll check his message after the, not after this fight, but after I'm done recording. Push kick. Probably wants to play Halo Reach or something like that. Oh, nice left. Big oh, look right at that hook. combo. Huge left. Oh, and, big right hand. He's down. Oh, and again. Wow, man. But man, he snapped back quick. Well, if nothing else, we have him hurt. The crowd showing their support for Brock Lesnar. Careful fighting Brock Lesnar on the ground. I don't know what kind of sweeps or anything he has because I really never Nine play as him. The only time I ever played as him in this game is when I was completing him in title mode. Because I just, you know, I'm going to do everybody eventually, I'm sure, because I've played this game so much. Oh, I was hoping that it landed. Would have put him out. Pushing his opponent away. He lets him up. Two minutes remains in round number one. Oh, there it is. The guy goes down. Yes. But look how beat up I am after just the few shots he hit me with, man. If you get hit too much, you know, he will put you out very fast. He is he's incredibly strong. Damn. Try to hit him again on his way down. And here we see it again. Incredible amount of torque he mm. puts into that. Right on the button. 
right on the button. That's what I'm saying. Here's Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called us. I didn't think I was going to get the first round knockout on him, but if you're going to beat Brock, that is the uh, that is the best way to do it. Just just get it, get rid of him quickly. Don't uh, don't try to win the decision over Brock because he's going to take you down so much in the fight. But look at that! He only landed like four punches and uh, that that were any worth anything. And uh, who's the champion? Stefan Struve. Hmm. I'll exit. I like Stephen Struve. I do. Uh, I love it when there's a big, big heavyweight jujitsu guy. And he's so tall, man. You know, when, 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 a, when an average heavyweight throws a body kick, when Stefan Struve throws that same body kick, you know, the exact same way, it hits people in the head. He's so tall. A heavyweight collision between Antonio Minotaro Noguera and Junior. This fight happened in real life, I believe. It's hard to remember those past fights when uh, they, you know, they happened a few years ago, and and they weren't considered like the best knockout ever, or the best uh, the best fight ever, or the best submission. You just sort of start to forget about them. You know, like a, a fight that is not remembered all too well, but I remember it because I, I thought it was a great fight, and I liked the way everybody was trash talking, and it was something like a. Nick Diaz or Nate Diaz <laughs> versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone. I came into that going for Nate, loved Nate, and I came out of it liking Donald a lot. And uh, he's fighting coming up. He, I don't believe he's fighting tonight, but I think maybe the St. Pierre card, the Johnny Hendricks versus St. Pierre, I think he might be on that card. I know he's fighting sometime soon, you know, relatively soon. There's a poll on UFC.com right now talking about uh, what's your most anticipated rematch. And uh, it's got Ronda Rousey versus Misha Tate, which no one's really excited for because Ronda Rousey's just going to win. And they have, uh, there's another one that I'm just, oh, Dan versus Vitor, which, you know, it's a good fight, but it's so overshadowed by, by of course, Dos Santos Velasquez, but also, I mean, obviously the most anticipated rematch is going to be uh, Chris Weidman versus Anderson Silva. And I came into that fight just knowing that Anderson was going to just put him out. And especially, what really got me is when, when Weidman started falling into his, uh, his thing, you know, I started, started getting angry and aggressive, but I was like, so Anderson's just going to throw that counter strike and that'll be it. But no. Well, making fun of, of uh, Weidman, just he got caught. Away, Joe. And I keep thinking about that fight, and everybody's like, Anderson's going to come out and fight the same way he did when he fought Rich and everything like this. And I'm like, he might not. Anderson's a weird dude. He does some, some weird stuff, and he could come out and fight the exact same way. And I, you know, I still think that if he came out and fought the exact same way, he could win. You know, if he came out and still danced around Weidman, he still could win. Uh, Weidman, I don't know. It's not. It's. It wasn't a lucky shot. He didn't mean to throw it. But it wasn't a lucky. It wasn't a luck. Lucky punch. It was a lucky connection. I don't know. I am still and Silva fan. He pulls guard. Oh, you don't want to get caught by a uh, submission by this dude. Stand it up. Come on, get up. I'm not jumping into your guard. Get up. There you go. And he lets him back up. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still an Anderson fan. You know, because Anderson was the UFC oh, thing. Right, you know, it was like. He got tagged there, but it looks like he's recovered. It was awesome that uh, that's my little cousin. It was awesome. You know, we had the guy 17 and 0 in the octagon. I mean, that was awesome. Having that guy, you know, having the best of all time to look at. 
And I still think he's one of the best of all time, you know? Seconds in the first he's the round. best uh, striker of all time, I think. Fedor, I think, is the greatest all-around fighter of all time. That's just good at everything. Uh, St. Pierre's the greatest points fighter of all time, obviously. You know, he's the best at, at, at doing what it takes to win the decision. Uh, which is boring, but again, you know, it wins your fights. John Jones is a... Uh, I want to see what he looks like in a few years. Because you could say, but after that... That fight with uh, Alexander Gustafson. It's a. Uh, it's hard to say whether he's as good as as he looks. I guess you could say. Uh, I want to see him mix it up again. I do. Let's take a look. Because I even, you know, I was going for I'm I was going for Gustafson. Because I'm not a very big timing. John Jones fan. And this was that crippling shot that got delivered. But I disregarded Gustafson right at the same target. same time. I, I, I thought that although I was going for him, it was sort of the situation technique. where it's like, yeah, I'm going Solid for him, but he's not going to win. Round, it was like, like when I watched no, Frank Mir versus Junior Dos Santos. I was like, yeah, I'm going for the guy. It's not like he's going to win. It's like Junior Dos Santos versus Mark Hunt, you know? I love Mark Hunt, so I was going for Mark Hunt, but Junior was going to win. Uh... Round two. Both come on, fighters come out orthodox. And uh, that's just, you know, it's just both guys staying in tight. It happens oh, sometimes nice right. where 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 you, you disregard a guy completely, even though he's the guy you like. You know, it's like whenever I watch Chris Lieben fight. I Team love Chris Lieben, but he's not gonna win. It's like how a lot of people were with Chris Weidman. They really wanted him to, but nobody thought he he was gonna win, and especially not by a knockout. I mean. If he was going to win, and no, he wasn't going to win by submission either. Right. Okay, Matt Serra oh, does not have better jiu-jitsu than the Noguera brothers or Anderson Silva. Oh, he just doesn't. Up. He's got, got good jiu-jitsu, but he was not going to teach. The clinch game once again. He, he wasn't going to teach Chris Weidman how to, how to win by submission over Anderson Silva. He, j he just wasn't. Pushing his opponent away. But, uh... Huge left and right. But decision, yeah, I could definitely have seen. Mike. Chris Weidman, they you know, Chael Sonning his way to victory, except, you know, actually now. winning. Uh, he, oh, my screen just went black. Sorry. I didn't even realize it had faded. I was too into the action and talking. Whoa, look at that. Man, that was nice. I liked that a lot. Uh, what was I saying? Jeez. You get a knockout like that. Yeah, but... but you know, I could see him winning a decision, or I could have seen him winning a decision, yeah, but anything else, no, I, 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 I did not think he was going to win at all. When he throws this one. And if he did, it was because he out-wrestled uh, Anderson. Let's see it one more time. He just nails him with that. That's a highlight reel knockout right, on the right there, Joe. That was nice. I liked that. Here we see it again, close up. And with the official decision, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is Okay, 30 minutes of prelims start. I said uh, I would I would finish this no matter what, though. I wasn't going to pause the recording to, uh, to go watch prelims. I'd miss the first couple of prelims to finish this because it's the easy way in. You know, I'm not too worried about the first couple of prelims. I don't usually... Oh, I'm already now... Oh, I won't miss any prelims then. Unless I fuck up royally. But uh, I am a big fan. I don't usually try to miss anything. Uh, I usually even watch the Facebook prelims and everything. Because I like to look at it and think, these these guys could be the next champion. You know, like these are these kids that, that are, are even like the older fighters that are, that are you know, like, you, like Jake Ellenberg and, and Chris Lytle, who are like legends. And I don't think, he, you know, either of those guys are going to be the next champion. But... Well, both of them, they're just fun to watch. Isn't Chris Lytle has the most, uh, the most of the night awards, or is that Joe Lozon? Uh, I know it's one of those two. I know that Joe Lozon's made the most money off of it, but I don't know. I don't know. God damn, he's tall. He really is, though. I like he. They have his 
statistics wrong in this game because I think now he's like 7 1 with a reach of uh, 84 and a half inches. Maybe not 7 1, maybe just 7 foot. Yeah, I, I do enjoy Steph and Steve. I have ever since I watched him catch an arm bar on somebody. He's got a couple of come from behind wins, I think, and I love a good come from the behind win, especially when it's a guy you're going for. Like, even when it's a guy you're not going for, it's awesome to watch. You know, like, I was going for Pat Berry and Pat Berry versus uh, Chet Congo, but just Chet Congo's come from behind win. It's so amazing. Oh, that is, that is... I thought about that knockout. That is just so insane. I love that knockout. Anyone who hasn't seen that, man, you gotta see it because that'll 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 change your views on on on, on, on Chet Congo definitely. If you don't like Chet Congo, you will after that fight. And now with the official introductions, the veteran voice of the Octagon. Here is Bruce Buffer. There's one thing I'm thinking about, and if anyone has an answer to this, Anderson Silva in like 2000. Four or five or whatever, or like early in his career, was 5'11", and when he came to the UFC, he was 6'2". How, how did that happen? How did he how did he make himself grow like that? I, I really, I, I, I'm interested. I guess I could look it up, but I'm lazy, and I always forget to, but yeah. I, that, that intrigues me. What time are we doing? Is this going to be a shorter one? It's only 36 minutes. We could beat this real fast. And now, the it's slightly longer than a Let's Play Bully episode. This man is a boy I'm really enjoying Let's Play Let's Playing Bully too. Uh, it's cool because I don't think I would have ever played that game, at least not right now, again without doing the Let's Play because it was not even in the back of my mind. I couldn't do Grand Theft Auto 4, so I was like, well, I don't want to do the DLCs to Grand Theft Auto 4. I don't want to do Grand Theft Auto 5, and Red Dead's really, really fucking long. And I don't know it that well. So I was looking at all my games, I didn't want to do any of the earlier Grand Theft Autos either, because I'm not very good at them at all. But so like, you know what, I'm really good at Bully, let's just do Bully. I'm really glad I did. Because uh, I'm enjoying it, I love the story in that game. But we'll save uh, Bully Talk for Bullies. Steppin' Strew! I'm trying my best. I want to talk about Crash Bandicoot, but I don't want to do that until I start playing it. I'm thinking I might have some guests on. I got a buddy who's going to start out Let's Playing, and I want to play, bring him on for the UFC. We could uh, bring him on for uh, Let's Play. Uh, let's Play UFC. He's got some interesting views on let's on UFC. So that'd be pretty cool. And get him in on any number of things. Just talk about it. We want to start doing like, podcasts and everything where we just talk about video games. We both have some interesting views on video games, and we're, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, he didn't play Genesis very much growing up, so, uh, you know, I can talk about that. And he played Nintendo growing up, so we can talk about that. And he had a Dreamcast where I was a PlayStation 2 guy. Oh, is this going to be over already? Oh, that move to kick, huh? Wow. Boom. Well, it looked like he was Jeez. hurt, but he snapped back really quick. And the chance wow. begin for Junior Dos Santos. And he answers huge left and right. Oh, Those man, this is intense. Back, First round. Nice body They've kick. both hurt, been hurt. Or you have to take down. down. He would not be denied there. Full guard. Mm -hmm. Wall walk, walk. Nope. Nope. Come on, get up, get up, get up. There we go. Back to their feet. Whoa. Just over a minute remains. Oh, big right hand. He's down. All right. Oh, he's got to figure out a way to. It's all over. That is as vicious a display of ground and pound that you and I. We had a couple. Of, that was nice. We had a bunch of TKOs, bunch of bunch of first round stoppages. UFC and, uh, champion. 
And a couple of highlight reel knockouts. Can we see it one more time? Knockout of Minotaro. The, the, didn't I get somebody with a head kick or something? I don't remember. I know there's another one that I really like. Look at it from this well, angle. One, wasn't there? Oh, yeah, that first knockout. It was technically a TKO, but I like the way it happened. Just uppercut him, knock him down, and then just cleanly finish him off on the ground. You got that. Sean McCorkle. Well, I'm very happy with the way this came out. Undefeated on my way to the title. Looks up for the last one. Seconds Which one coming up after this? So. Yeah. Yeah, this was, this was good. Junior Dos Santos is the new UFC heavyweight champion of the world. Hopefully we'll hear that tonight. Although, you know, anyone who's a Kane fan, I got nothing against you. I love Kane. He's a great fighter. Yeah. So we, you know, that was it. This has been a Let's Play UFC Undisputed 3 title mode. I'd be fighting Brennan Schaub next. I don't like Brennan Schaub at all. I dislike Brennan Schaub. Kane's number six. Shane Carlin, he's retired now. That's a surprise retirement for me. All right, well, uh, thanks everyone who watches this. Um, hope you enjoy UFC 166 tonight. Uh, yeah, so, Thanks for watching. See ya.